Welcome to Troweling Down Biblical Archaeology for the 21st Century. Hi, I'm Gary Byers. This is Dr. Steve Collins, our own personal rock star, the director of the Tal El Imam excavation in Jordan. And we have here with us six of our best friends, um, our own version of the Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, really antique. As nothing these, here is younger than 3,700 years. With the exception of, of this. And we are looking forward to sharing with you uh, some of the finds from Tal El Hammam, some things that, that almost um, make important history. In fact, Steve will say, could be among the most important historical finds, biblical finds, maybe in the history of the subject. So here we go. Troweling down biblical archaeology for the 21st century. And to do 21st century stuff, we're going to have to go back to the 18th century BC. Yes, we are. And look at some stuff right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six items. And they're, they're kind of different. Um, this, I happen to know what it is, but this, these two are very different from this. Yeah. And those... Very different. This was found in your square. That, uh, yep, both of those. 7HH. Yep. UH, UA, UB 7HH. I was excavating in yeah. part of the palace from the Middle Bronze yeah. Age, mm -hmm. and uh, that was mud brick. That was, this, this was a sun-dried mud brick. And came, you, can see, you can actually see some of the temper that's in the brick? Bible talks about the Israelites had to have straw for their bricks. You can actually see right there where there was straw one time mm -hmm. inside that brick. And uh, this brick, this, this sun-dried, wasn't fired in a kiln course, like we have fragment, bricks today. it's a fragment of a brick. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very small piece. In fact, these bricks, the size of these bricks typically were... About 45 to 50 centimeters by about 25 to 30 centimeters by about 15 centimeters thick. So these were big bricks. Big bricks. Made of mud and then sun-dried with no kiln firing. And uh, this one um, was caught in an incredible burning destruction. And you can see it melted. This is what the brick looks like on the inside when you break one open. Well, we're going to talk about but it. This one in melted. A yeah, we'll so, talk about that toward the end. So these, oh, this is last. Yeah. Oh, this is my brick from my square. You, you're we're going just last. convinced that the first shall be last. I, I am. Okay, well, let's let, introduce to us the most important character that you think we have found at Tal El Hamam. Um, we're going to introduce these sort of chronologically in terms of their discovery. Okay. Does that, that work? That works. Um, let's talk about this one. Now, in 2006, which was our first excavation season, we excavated a trench, a probe trench, into the heart of the upper city. And it was the first penetration, it was our very first penetration, into the Middle Bronze Age destruction matrix from the time of Abraham. Now, we knew, we already had seen the Middle Bronze Age rampart on the far eastern end yep. of the upper city. But this was going into the heart of the city, inside the city. And what we ran into was the top of the destruction layer of the Middle Bronze Age. Now, some things have changed on top of the tail, but about how far down from the current level top of this tail was it to get down to this? How far down did you have to Almost get? three meters. Three meters, 10 feet. Yeah. So once we're down about three meters, we get under the Iron Age, we jump back then instantly 700 years. So there's a gap there of 700 years. So we jump back to the Middle Bronze Age. Now, what does that gap mean? As an archaeologist, if you look at a gap like that, what does that mean? Yeah, and, and, it, was, and it was just, it was dirt, a lot, of, a lot of dirt, a lot of soil, but nothing in it at all. And so we, we, when we see that, we realize that in this location, nobody was living there for some 700 years. That's a long time. And we found that same phenomenon over the entire site. Yeah. So um, once we got into that destruction matrix, of the Middle Bronze Age, that terminal phase, we call it, 
right within a few centimeters of the top of that destruction material, we ran into this particular item. Now, if you look at it, and let me just kind of move it back and forth just a little bit before I set it down. Now, we're going to see the glisten on it. It's actually this surface is glassified. It's gone liquid. It's been melted and turned into glass. And you notice it's greenish. Let me set it here right there. And you can see that it's greenish. You can see that it has some black parts here, some blackish parts, and that's carbon. That's carbon separating from the, the, the melting silica or kaolin. And then we have some of these white, whitish specks. See if they show up well. You see some of the white specks embedded in the glass, in the melted surface. And that's calcium separation. Mm -hmm. So the carbon separation, which was black, calcium separation, which is white. White. And what's interesting about this is that it is a pottery sherd. And, and a pottery sherd means? A piece, of, a piece of a jar. This is a piece of a large storage jar. You can see the wheeling marks here. And we can actually stance the wheeling marks, and we know that this is from the shoulder of the vessel. So it's not quite to the neck, almost to the neck, but on the shoulder of the vessel, we have a piece of this jar. It is about the size of half of my hand. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly good size piece of pottery. But the interesting thing is, it's melted on the surface of it. The backside is not melted. The backside is not melted. That's the inside of the you jar. You can see in the cross section here, by the way, we, this is one of the cross sections where we had it cut and then been, it's been analyzed in numerous uh, machines, uh, electron microscopes, scanning electron microscopes and a Kamika 100 uh, microanalyzer, which is a glorified uh, electron microscope. Anyway, you can see that the clay is normal toward the bottom. It is darkened toward the center and it is melted at the surface. You mentioned uh, the glass. You talked about the surface being glass. To, it's not literally glass, but when you say glass, we mean that it's been vitrified, that it's melted. Yeah, and, I, and, it, and, it, is, like and it is literally glass because that's how glass is made from yes, sand yes. or from sil silicates. And so um, it's actually glass. It's gla now, when I first saw this shirt, uh, when it was first excavated, they called me down in, in there to look at it because it's st sitting there in C2 looking up at us. And I saw that shirt and my heart just dropped. And it dropped because I knew that, well, number one, it looked like a piece of glazed pottery. And in the Holy Land, green glazed pottery means to us the Islamic period. Yes. 500, 600 A.D. A.D. And we were looking for 8, 1800 or 1600 B.C. Or even earlier. But earlier, we didn't, earlier. We didn't know because yeah. we didn't have a good date on the, on the destruction right. layer at that point. But we knew the Middle Bronze Age because of the pottery. But we saw, I saw this and I went, my, my first thought was, well, I can't tell you exactly what all the words I used. Good. Good, I won't. But I, I, I thought immediately, what in the world is this piece of Islamic pottery doing almost three meters down here in this, in this trench? Yeah. It just, then, in, then I reached down and I picked it up and I turned it over and I went, Phew. ah, it's, it's not Islamic pottery. It's a, it's a piece of Middle Bronze Age pottery. It's a store jar a shoulder. And, but yet the surface of it is boiled into glass. So I tossed this thing up. Now the guy, I tossed it up to, there were several people standing around looking down at us. And so I, I threw, I, I think Carol was down there too at that, at that yeah, moment, yeah. Uh, our, our assistant director. Yeah. And so I tossed it up and one of the guys caught it. Now the guy that caught it was uh, actually an old guy. He's now passed on, mm -hmm. but uh, he had worked on the Trinity Project for the first atomic bomb here in, here in New Mexico. So that, the place that's called the Trinity site here in New Mexico was the place where the very first atomic bomb test was done. Right. About 1942 or three, whatever it Somewhere was. Somewhere in there, and he was there. He was part of that He was team. part of the project, he was part of the site, he was there when they, when they detonated it, and um, he caught this thing, 
And he looked at it and he yelled down to me. He said, this thing looks like Trinitite. Trinitite. Now, I, really? I said, what is that? Because I didn't know what Trinitite was. Never heard the word in my life. And um, so I said, what is that? He said, well, you know, it's the material around the base of the explosion of the Trinity bomb. Uh, I don't remember which one was first, little boy or fat yeah, man. But anyway, um, it's, it's the melted sand at the base of the explosion. Okay? Now, here's Trinitite from that explosion. This is, from, this is from the explosion of the first atomic bomb. Notice the melted material. Notice how it glistens. It's greenish glass. Notice the white part of it. I'm going to turn it over and get some more. See the white part? That's calcium separation. See the dark part, the dark black part? That's carbon separation. So it's the same colors. It's exactly the same and colors. And the same gl glaze on the outside, it's the top as we have on our shirt. In fact, when I handed this piece of pottery to the geologist who first did the Kamiko 100 analysis of this, of this shirt, she looked at it and she said, nice piece of Trinitite for this piece from the Middle Bronze Age. She knew what Trinitite looked she like. She knew what that looked it like. Just, it had to be. And I said, she said, oh, I see it's pottery as she flipped it over. And, and she said, oh, it's pottery. Where did it come from? And I said, never mind, just do the test. Well, she knew where it came from because Tal Hamam Jordan was all over the, the, the paper that we had to, the paperwork right, to fill out right. to have it analyzed. So anyway, she knew that it's identical. Well, we now know physically, physically, what it took to do this. The Trinitite. At, at the Trinity site. Yep. It took to do this. In other words, the same temperature and the same duration. In other words, a super hot flash heat event that caused this also caused this. Identical physical properties produced by identical physical phenomenon. Now, as, as we've been talking, you're a dirt digging archeologist. And so your, uh, your understanding uh, about this, uh, you're, not, you're not one of the scientists that understands all of this stuff, but those folks who did, they, they broke all this down. They broke it all down. And they said, this, now this is the same stuff. This has since been analyzed by many, many scientists in many, many labs. And we know that it took a very, very high heat event of tens of thousands of degrees Celsius to do this, as it did to do this at the, at the atomic bomb site. And no, we're not saying that aliens came and blew Sodom up with atomic bombs. Oh. You know, some people have said that, but that, that, that would be dumb. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's not radioactive. It's not anything like that. It's a phenomenon we would call a, a cosmic airburst or a meteoritic airburst. And maybe in one of these episodes, we'll go into what that is. But it's a, it's a cosmic event that explodes as a superheated plasma upon the ground, doesn't leave a crater, but it toasts everything like Tunguska, Siberia, 1908. Yes, like I the know near, that story. Like the near disaster over Chelyabinsk, Russia in 2013, where we had an airburst that was caught on about 1,500 dash cams. Yes. And is quite well studied now. But anyway, the similar event is what wiped out the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the whole of the plain, and which is why nobody could live there because the agricultural land was destroyed. It took 700 years for people to be able to live there once again. Thus that gap between the two yeah, periods exactly. in, our, in our Now home. let's move quickly down the line because we have some brothers and sisters here. So this was our first look at the superheated event that took out the city of Sodom. That's the first one. Now, the second one we found was this one. Wow. Now, you'll notice that this is really, really cool. Look at the surface. This is a piece of pottery. Look at the surface of it. It's boiled up like lava. Yep. You see the bubbles. The bubbles are, have melted and popped. It's outgassing. And you can see right here on the right-hand side of it, left-hand side of it to you that are looking at this, right there, that's normal. That's untouched. Normal pottery, then, then it starts to get a little bit blackened, and then it melts, okay? What does that mean? It means that the direction was this way, that it only hit one side of the vessel. It only melted one side of the vessel, part of the vessel. In other words, part of the vessel was exposed. Probably This thing was probably sitting on the roof. Of the house, yeah. And so there was direct exposure. It boiled up and melted. So there's another one. And by the way, almost every time we... 
we, we open a square, we find some kind of high heat event mm -hmm. indicator. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. This is a, this, this is a piece of a, uh, well, we think it's a, a weight, but it could be grinder, it could be weight, but look at it, how beautiful it is. It's, it's perfectly formed, almost like an egg. But I want you to look at this, how it's ex literally exploded. Now we reassembled this to this, to this point out of about a hundred pieces. And you can look inside here and you can see that this thing was literally, literally heated. And as a result of the heat, it just exploded it. And this came from the palace. This came from the palace area. And, um, but you can see that each of the pieces that we put together is burned differently. In other words, it was broken before each of these pieces. In other words, it heated and blew up and then in the ground it became discolored. Mm -hmm but we couldn't find the rest of it. We just found this much of it. So this is a heat, heat exploded object, okay? This is what we were referring to first. You can see this piece of mud brick. It's a mud brick fragment. Look how it's melted. This is greenish, once again, greenish glassy material. It's melted. You can see the bubbles, the outgassing of a melted. Now look at this. There's the surface melt. This is sort of fired hard, but Look at the surface melt right here. It's only about a quarter inch deep, not even that hardly. And you can see all the little bubbles. This thing got really hot. We think this was one of the bricks on the, that got maximum exposure by being part of the upper parapets of yeah. the palace. Yeah, it's just like where those shirts yeah. were probably. And by the way, there. all of these things are found mixed into the matrix. Because yeah. this is a churning, roiling, boiling matrix of destruction. And the final one is piece of roof. Yes. Piece of roofing material, fused. Uh, it had clay, and it was wattle and daub. Let's see, and right here. Wa wattle and yeah. daub means what? Uh, you put reeds, and you put beams and reeds, and then you put mud in it, and you make your roof out of it. This is, this is the leftover piece of mud with the reed impression. Yeah. So there's a read impression here, read impressions here, but you can see again the melt, the bubbles of the melted material from the roof, and this is found down in the meter, meter and a half thick destruction of the, of the palace. So what we're saying is this. Now there's lots more. We have buckets and buckets of this stuff. Yeah. Now, um, every time we get into the matrix, it's churned up, everything is broken, everything is fragmented, everything is exploded, um, and this is a high heat event. This was the destruction of the city of Sodom. It's blown up exactly as the Bible describes, fire and burning stone out uh, from Yahweh out of the heavens. Yeah. How the Bible describes it in Genesis 19. And this is the physical evidence that the city of Sodom was actually destroyed in this manner. We would love to have your questions and comments about what we're talking about. We'll certainly talk about this some more. This is this is the Tal El Hamam excavation in Jordan, and we believe we've discovered the biblical city of Sodom. Stay tuned. Join us again next month. We've got some more to share.